Hurricane Center meteorologists have released their early hurricane season forecast for the Atlantic Basin for 2010. The forecast is calling for a much more active 2010 season with above normal threats on the U.S. coastline. Hurricanes are some of the most destructive storms on Earth. Their impacts are even worse if communities don't have enough advance notice and can't prepare efficiently. Most coastal areas now get at least a day or two of warning as a hurricane approaches. But sometimes, a hurricane can form quickly, especially in the Caribbean, and that process is one of the hardest things to predict. Hurricane season and hurricanes affect our daily life directly and in every way possible. We watch the weather every single day. As a hurricane is approaching, we look at every model we can find, everything we can see on the computer, every prediction, every proposed track, and decide when and how soon to go into a lockdown mode versus uh, waiting it out, versus staying right in the harbor on our moorings. They didn't protect, um, predict that Hurricane Hugo was going to do the damage that it did, but I mean, we were wiped out literally. It's like technology, it hasn't upgraded to the point or the hurricanes hasn't been looked at close enough to still be able to predict, to predict them. Now there's a study that could shed light on which storms will develop into hurricanes and which ones will not. The field project is appropriately named PREDICT, the pre-depression investigation of cloud systems in the tropics, and they were looking to do just that better predict what storms will develop into hurricanes and which ones won't. Because hurricane tracks are now so well forecasted once a storm develops, the challenge that still remains is forecasting how strong a hurricane will get, including whether it will form at all. St. Croix has the, uh, because of its location, doesn't have uh, normally a very long forecast time on uh, hurricanes. Uh, obviously, if you live in Florida, you have somewhat more of a lead time. Well, I think ultimately it's about providing better warnings for the public um, farther in advance. So trying to help protect people, um, give them time to prepare for uh, an oncoming tropical storm. This particular hurricane study was done in collaboration with the National Science Foundation, supporting the study of hurricane development, NASA, which researched rapid intensification of hurricanes, and NOAA, which studied more accurate hurricane forecasting. There are several ingredients necessary for a hurricane to develop, including a pre-existing weather disturbance, warm sea surface temperatures, atmospheric instability, high humidity in the lower atmosphere, low vertical wind shear, and enough Coriolis force inherited from the spin of the Earth. However, even when all ingredients are present, it's not a guaranteed recipe. Many systems have all the ingredients, but the conditions are not sufficient enough to develop into a hurricane. PREDICT caught dozens of potential hurricanes in their embryonic stages, but only a few of these developed further. The scientists involved in this study are trying to find out why. Well, the, the basic idea is that um, within a, a tropical wave, so for example, uh, easterly wave coming off Africa, or the system that we're looking at right now, which is a wave developing within the intertropical convergence zone, um, those, th there's a protected region there of recirculating flow, which we, is analogous in some ways to the pouch of a marsupial. So you have, a, in some sense, a, a baby a hurricane or a baby vortex that is protected from the environment. Um, in which there's a lot of ne negative influences, for example, dry air or uh, a vertical shear. So we think that um, this pouch region can help sustain a very early disturbance for a longer period than it could if it were just out in the open. So we're trying to uh, target those pouches and we're up to um, 44 pouches now. So there's a lot of different uh, pouches, but not all of those turn into hurricanes. So I think that's kind of what we want to uh, focus on is what are the different characteristics of the pouches and um, which conditions are more uh, favorable for development. The capabilities of the NSF NCAR G5 aircraft allow for unprecedented research opportunities. The altitude and range of the aircraft make it ideal for studying the development of weather disturbances over the Atlantic. The G5 aircraft hosts an impressive array of instruments on the exterior and interior, as well as instruments that drop from the aircraft to collect data used to create a vertical profile of the atmosphere. 
Drop sounds are a really cool uh, piece of equipment and actually very key in Predict. It's a package that is about the size of a tennis ball canister. Um, and what we do is on the plane, we uh, set frequencies to it so we can talk to it via radio as it's dropping by a parachute through the storms. So as it drops, it takes the temperature, relative humidity, pressures, wind direction, and wind speed, and all that gets sent back up to the plane. And then we send it back down here to the ground so then the uh, scientists can see what that profile of the atmosphere looks like through that storm. And they can either guide us um, to see what, where they would want to drop next or what parts of the storms they would they like, or uh, put it into the modeling system and next the next day or that night, hopefully get a better idea of where this storm's going. Many people are needed to conduct a large-scale field project such as PREDICT, everyone from aircraft mechanics and instrument technicians to weather forecasters and software engineers. And oh yeah, scientists too. I'm an instrument scientist and I have a couple of trace gas instruments on the G5 and I'm measuring ozone and one of the water vapor uh, sensors. And those two measurements are most useful to the mission as indicators of what kind of air we're sampling. Well, ozone here in the tropics is uh, quite low in the boundary layer. It's, it's on the order of 8 to 20 parts per billion by volume. And then air from the stratosphere is more like 100 or 200 parts per billion by volume uh, in mixing ratio. And so those kinds of concentration differences can be used to infer whether you're, whether you're seeing a lot of air coming down from the stratosphere or air coming up from the boundary layer. We're part of their detection sleuthing package. <laughs> uh, my role here at PREDICT is um, support of the aircraft data system, data acquisition system, and uh, real-time displays, and then all the satellite communications with the plane. We're studying tropical cyclone formation, tropical depression formation in the real world. So we're, that's why we're really keeping track of the weather on a daily basis. We're having weather briefings every day, uh, analyses, uh, model forecasts, uh, discussions. That's what the forecasters at the National Hurricane Center do every day. And we're, we're having to do very similar things to try to get a handle on how storms form in the real world. Uh, my main involvement is as a forecaster. So I'm, my main job is to try and look at these systems that are developing and try and help the PIs assess whether or not these systems are gonna go on to become tropical cyclones. Um, basically the decision what to fly and what not to fly. So in, in real time when we're flying, I usually sit in front of the big monitor in there uh, along with my laptop and, and look at the products that we have. Uh, we have a couple products that show how strong the convection is, how strong the thunderstorms are, and especially how high they extend. Ultimately, all this research is done for the benefit of the general public to provide more accurate hurricane forecasting. It takes a long time to gather and analyze the needed data and then incorporate it into weather prediction models. Uh, well, I think we have some early findings uh, as of now that suggest that the marsupial paradigm, if you call it that, the mar this new model of cyclogenesis is, uh, I think, uh, panning out to be very useful. So that's what we're learning so far. Um, more to do, a lot more science to do. A lot more to do. How could we operate and how well could we operate was really a question going into this project. And I think we've answered that question that, that uh, the platform was completely adequate for what we wanted to do. And really, uh, the performance was, was terrific. Um, and the number of flights and reliability of, of the instrumentation uh, was, was really surpassed, I think, what we had even hoped for. The, the, the foremost thing is we got to watch several of these tropical weather systems evolve over the course of, of many days, which is something we haven't really been able to do in the past. That's actually the real success in the project is, is having good data on both cases that develop and cases that don't develop. It's a year and a half after the project. These things take a lot of time to, to fully come to fruition. And in fact, all of the findings of PREDICT, I mean, we probably won't really know for another three or four years kind of the, the totality of the, the science, scientific impact of this, of this project.